yeah, we have a bunch of like, before we get into our AMA today, let's talk about our news. Let's talk about some news for a minute. So big news. Warner Brothers has decided that they are going to release their 2021 slate of movies that include The Matrix 4, Dune, some other shit I can't remember, but they're going to release all of these movies, not just in theaters, but also uh, have it streaming on HBO Max. So they decided that they're going to do this. And what does that mean? What does it mean that Warner Brothers is like, okay, we're going to release all of our fucking movies in the theater also uh, on streaming at the same time. It means that it's the death knell for the theaters is what it means. The theaters have already kind of like, you know, it's been, their business has been going down, you know, for the past few years. This is the nail in the coffin for them. So big chain theaters like AMC or whatever the fuck, you know, else there is, like they're in trouble. Uh, because there's a lot of people, they don't give a fuck about the cinema or the experience or like the whole thing. You know, the average man, like he doesn't have time for that shit, I guess. He just is just like, whatever, I'll just stream in my house, it'll be just as good. I don't believe that's true. I like to see a movie in the theater, personally. I love the experience of sitting in a room with a bunch of strangers in the dark, having this emotional experience, you know, where you're all like going on this, this ride together. You're on this, you're, you're listening to the story. You're all transfixed. It's so much fun. There's, there's popcorn involved. <laughs> there's like, you sneak in candies. I love the whole thing. I love going there. I love the whole thing. Okay. I'm like really into the whole experience. I really like it a lot. Plus, not only that, you get to watch this movie on a huge screen. And if you're lucky, uh, you can have really great audio, like surround sound, like Dolby digital fucking sound, you know? And it just, it just sounds so good. It's just, you're immersed, you're immersed. You're totally immersed in this story, in this movie. And I love it. And I just think it's great. And COVID has, has put the kibosh on theaters this year. And like Hollywood's already been kind of falling apart and they don't know what the fuck they're doing. And then like all this shit's just like, fucked everything up and then now Warner Brothers is just like just piling on you know they're just like you know what we're just gonna stream it fuck it we're not even the theater experience whatever because before it, a movie would be released at the theater for a while and then you couldn't get it on streaming you know you can't get it on streaming so it's like oh you know like you have to go to the theaters if you want to see this movie and I don't know how these movies are gonna make their money back like Dune, I mean, they spent a lot of money on that. So like, how are they gonna recoup that with like HBO Max streaming? You know, like, I, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I don't know. And then I feel like what's really a bummer is that, is that I assume it's not going to recoup ex its expenses because this is some all new fuckery bullshit. And then we're never gonna see the second part of Dune because they're not gonna spend that amount of money on another fuck, like how, if it can't make its money back, how is it gonna make its money back? I mean, maybe if they distribute it to like streaming platforms and it can make its money back that way, but like it's less democratic, you know? Like the thing that's cool about the theater is you have a people, individuals that go in, they buy a ticket. And sometimes you have just millions of people going and buying tickets. And like, it's just so cool. And you get to like kind of record these numbers and like, that's really fun. But like, how do you do that on streaming? Like, can you do that on streaming? Like, I don't, I don't think so. So it's pretty weird. And a lot of towns are going to be like theaterless. I feel like pretty soon, or at least like large theaterless. But I was trying to think of silver linings because I, I was a little bummed about it. I was like, kind of, I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of depressed about the news. But I was trying to think of silver linings, you know? And I was like, well, it might be really cool if, you know, things like AMC's and shit, like, okay, they shut down, whatever. AMC's popcorn's trash anyways, okay? I'm going, I will cry for Arclight. That's a, it's a local chain. I love the Arclight. Um, I will cry if Arclight's dead. They probably are. Um, unless the state or the federal government, or somebody steps in. Like, I just don't understand how these these places can operate if they're not allowed to fucking operate. Like, how can you keep your business going if you can't open your business? Like, you can't, like, it's just not gonna happen. Like, I don't care how big your business is, like, it's fucked up. And so, um, I don't know. I, I don't know the whole, anyways, the silver lining. Maybe this will be the impetus for a lot of individuals out there who are movie lovers to, start their own independent theaters you know like after you know covid everything whatever dies down and like we're back to you know some semblance of just like people going to a theater and watching a fucking movie together <laughs> like when that starts happening again i don't know how long it'll be 
when that starts happening again, um, then, you know, I don't know, maybe some cool people can come in and like open some, some neat little, little independent theaters. Cause I love independent theaters and I'm a big supporter of independent theaters here in LA. And, uh, and I think that more people deserve to have independent theaters because they're really fun and you can like play like everything, not just like what's coming out right now. You know, like that's the thing about the independent theater is that they have, they play shit from whenever the fuck and then they have guests and like interviews. It's like so much more personal, you know, it's like super fun. So I'm just like hoping that that would be cool. You know, I mean, I was like, I was like, maybe I'll just open an independent theater or whatever. <laughs> maybe I'll just show movies. I'll just show whatever movies I want to feel. I feel like showing. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, it's like, it's all falling apart. It's kind of sad. You got to mourn it. You know, you got to be like, okay, you know, theaters as I know it is over. You know, I wonder what the last Arclight film I saw is. I can't remember. I need to go and I need to log in. I'm a member. I like their shit. I like their shit so much. I'm a fucking member. Um, I should go in and see what the last film I saw at the Arclight was. You know? I know. I do rep the theater. I love, I don't know. I love the theater. I mean, drive-in returns. Okay, drive-ins have been fun. I'll say that's another silver lining. I've been to a bunch of drive-ins this year. I've never gone to drive-ins in my life. <laughs> so I've started to go to the drive-in, which has been really fun. I really like it. It's been great. So that's been really cool. Um... And I mean, I see the advantages of the drive-in, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of, oh, Davey, thank you for all these gift subs. Hold on, I need some more almonds, you know? Um, mm. I'm eating um, wasabi and soy sauce almonds too. They're really good, they're, mm. you know? So, um, yeah, oh, man. Hold on, I wonder if I can look in right now, hold on. I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna try to arc light. I'm gonna try to log in my arc light thing. Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey was the last film that I saw the arc light. Before that, it was Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Before that, it was The Joker. Before that, it was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Before that, it was an American Werewolf in London. Arc light presents. So, wow. Birds of Prey. That was the last one I saw at the arc light. That was the last time I enjoyed their fucking popcorn with their real butter and uh man that's crazy it's crazy um <laughs> so yeah so i didn't mean to get like kind of kind of like dark with you guys but you know we need to talk about it like it's so weird i was thinking about the other day i was kind of like looking at some of my old videos and i was like fuck like I couldn't even, even if I wanted to, I couldn't even do this because there's like no movie culture, right? Like there's no like big theater movie thing going on right now, you know? Like what I used to do, like just like talk about movies and do these little reviews and shit on YouTube. It's like, oh man, there's not even that thing going on anymore, you know? It's crazy. Crazy. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, whatever. Uh, another movie news. They're making a Spider-Man 3 movie. It's going to be a Spider-Verse movie. It's going to have all these different Spider- It's going to have- You know, you're going to have Tom Holland as Spider-Man, but you're also going to have Andrew Garfield's going to come back as his Spider-Man. You're going to have, uh, Tobey Maguire, I guess, come back. He better slim down. I don't know. I mean, I don't know where he's at, but I feel like he's going to have to, like, really get it together <laughs> to get in that Spider-Man suit. But the biggest, most exciting thing that I've read about it is that Alfred Molina- who plays Dr. Octopus in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 is set to come back and reprise his role as Dr. Octopus. And like, I just, I love Alfred Molina. I love Alfred Molina. I think he's so cool and sexy. I don't know what it is about that man, but like, it, it's like, that's usually not my type, you know? But I'm just like, mm, Alfred Molina, give me some more like what else you got you know I just I just watched feud with him in it uh he plays like the director Robert Aldrich I think is his name the guy who directed uh, and put together um whatever happened to baby Jane and so uh anyways he's so good like I just love his voice and like he just has this confidence like this gravity and he's just like these dark eyes and they're just like intense you know I'm just like ooh, there's just something about him and so I'm really excited that he's gonna be back I heard that Netflix Daredevil was going to maybe be in it. And I don't really give a fuck. I mean, like, 
okay, that'd be cool to see him in there. I'm not against having Netflix Daredevil in there. But what I really want to see is Vincent D'Onofrio Kingpin in there. That's that's another fat old man actor that I have got the hots for, man. I don't care how fat Vincent D'Onofrio gets. <sighs> he knocks my socks off. His Kingpin portrayal, oh, so sexy. Damn, <laughs> like, damn, you know? Oh, and like reading the comics, I never got a boner for like Kingpin or like Dr. Octopus, but man, these two men have just like, whoa, they just fucking killed it. And I'm just like here for it. You know what I'm saying? So like, I really hope, oh, oh can you imagine Alfred Molina, Dr. Octopus talking to and like teaming up with Vincent D'Onofrio, Kingpin? Oh, oh, I would like my ovaries are gonna explode. Like, I just can't, like, I just can't. It's like too much. It's like too much. Oh, that would be, mm, I would be here for that. <laughs> I would be here for that. Uh, go to horny jail, Dan. I know. <laughs> I know, I know. I just think it'd be great. So, I, you know, fingers crossed, you know, we'll see. I mean, at least we've got, we definitely got Melina, but I feel like if Daredevil, Netflix Daredevil is there, then Vincent D'Onofrio has, I mean, He's gotta be there. Like, what the what the fuck else is Vincent D'Onofrio doing? Like, what fucking get Vincent D'Onofrio? Like, he's amazing. So, so that's exciting. So that's some movie news. Um, let's see here. What else? What else? What other movie news is there? Do you guys in the chat? We can kind of start or ask me anything. You know, we'll start. Start. <laughs> we'll start with some of that. All right, we're gonna start with some ask me anything. So we're gonna ask me anything today. This is a, just a light, fun stream. You're just gonna ask me questions. Do you have any movie questions? Do you have, oh, thank you, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for life for that sub. Thank you very much. Oh, and the gift sub, thank you. Um, uh, let's see here. Nolan denounced Warner Brothers. Yeah, yeah, he did, and I am fully with him. Uh, Warner Brothers just fucked theaters, uh, and, uh, it's sad. So, yeah, I'm with him. I get it. Because <laughs> that's the thing, too. It's like, it's like, Villeneuve, who's directing Dune, like, he specifically has filmed this movie to be seen on the big screen. Not in your fucking house. Not your fucking shitty house and your fucking stupid TV with your crappy fucking sound. That is not what he envisioned and what he created for people to experience, you know? And, uh, it sucks that uh, a lot of people will not be able to have that experience because theaters are gonna shut down and it's gonna be a little sad. So I get it. I'm with you, Christopher Nolan. Uh, fuck that shit. Uh, I, yes, I feel betrayed as well. So Beans, we have a little Beans in the chat. Beans, would you like to, come here. Come here, come a little closer. You're a little too far, you know? Oh yeah, one step closer, one step closer. <gasps> Oh, look what I found. Oh my gosh. Is there anything you guys need to ask Beans? It's Beans has asked me anything. Is there anything you need to ask this cat? Let me know in the chat. Beans, are you taking questions? You have to take at least one question. I, I need to, I need to take one question. Miss Superconductor asks, how did you get so beautiful, Beans? This is a question that I ask her. I was actually asking her this earlier today. I ask her this question all the time. I go, Beans, who authorized this? Who, I'm gonna need to see some receipts. Who told you you could be so beautiful? Who said this is an illegal amount of beauty and charm and cuteness and I'm gonna need to see the paperwork. Um, this is off the charts. This is outrageous. <laughs> so, um, baby beans. That's right. Baby beans, everybody. Baby beans. Um, but yeah, so I stand with you, Christopher Nolan. I feel for you. And I feel for Denny Villeneuve. And I wonder if we'll get a part two of Dune because of this. You know, I just feel like it's over. We had it. We had it. We were so close. We were so close. We were so close to having the full Dune experience. I don't know if it's going to happen anymore. I'm sad. I mean, we'll definitely get the first one, but. You know, I'll drive to another state. I'll see it in IMAX. I'll risk it all. I'll risk it all to see fucking Dune in the theater, in the IMAX. So.
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, ring that bell, and tell your friends. You can join me live on twitch.tv slash DanicaXIX and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DanicaXIX. Support for 19 Academy comes from viewers like you on patreon.com slash DanicaXIX.